In this video, I'm going to show you how to stack a three-tiered cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you want to learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. Today we are going to stack a cake. There is, I, I did a video a while back on how I stack cakes, but I'm a lot better at filming now and I wanted to redo it for you guys. And I have a couple different techniques that I use now as well that I wanted to show you. So let's get into the video. All right, I want to stack this cake. This is a three tiered cake. And I just want to sh go over how I do this. Now I refrigerate all of my cakes. So this one, this tier is covered in fondant, but the other, the other tiers are ice and buttercream and everything is in the fridge. So when I stack this, I'm not going to mess anything up because everything is really solid and it, I just refrigerate all of my cakes. I do have a video on how I refrigerate and how I deal with condensation and all that. And I will link that in the description. I have this sewing ruler. And I love this because it has a little slider so you can gauge how tall the cake is. So what I, what I wanna do is put this up against the side of the cake and make sure sometimes my tiers are way too high and then I would just have to use a regular ruler to do this. What I want to do is get low with the cake. I'm looking down here, <laughs> if you can see me, and I'm down here and I'm looking for the highest point. A seven inch cake is gonna go on top here. So I don't want to put this down too far at the edge because the edge is gonna be sticking out. So I wanna come in a little bit, find the highest point, stick the ruler down, and then push the blue nubbin at the top down so it's touching the top of the cake. And this is actually the exact height of the ruler. So that's perfect. So I'm gonna pull this out. And now I know that my straws have to be this long. So I use bubble tea straws as supports in my cakes. Now, I'm an idiot and I didn't pay attention and I got individually wrapped straws and I'm so annoyed because I have to unwrap and waste all this plastic every time that I do this. So I will find ones that are not in individually wrapped and link them below. For a nine inch cake, I like to put eight straws in there. It, it really depends on the, the size of the tier that it's supporting. So this, this bottom tier is gonna support a seven inch tier. So I would do either seven or eight straws in the bottom tier to support the seven inch tier, right? So I usually do the same amount of straws or one more depending if it's odd or even. Does that make sense? If it's odd, I go up one. If it's even, I do the same as the tier on top. Oh my God, I feel like nobody's gonna understand that, but hopefully that came across. <laughs> so I'm putting eight straws in here. What I wanna do, there's a pointy end of this and I don't want the pointy end. I'm gonna put the flat end up against the blue part. And I have a Sharpie marker and I want to draw a little line right after the ruler ends. And I'm gonna cut that, this line off so there's gonna be no marker in the cake and just do that for all of them. And once that's done, I'm gonna take my scissors just underneath the marker and cut the marker off and do that for all eight. And if you wanna be technical and make sure you're sticking the straws in the right spot, a seven inch cake is going on top of here. So I have a six inch cake pan right? Because if I put a seven inch cake pan and I traced, then you might be able to see the lines. So I have a six inch pan and what I want to do, just uh, center it, make sure that it looks pretty even the whole way around. And then just take a needle tool or a Dresden tool or something with a point and make a little line. And now I know I want the straws not to be anywhere outside of this line. I do even number of straws all the time. That way it, it's just easier to put an even number in and have everything spaced right. So I'm going to start at the top. And when I have fondant cakes, I have to twist it a little bit to break through the fondant and then I can push down. And then I'm going to start directly in front and then one on either side. And then I'm just going to go in the center of both of all of them. So I forgot to mention that I marked with a little marker the very front of the cake so I know where the front of the cake is. And here's my second tier. 
This is ice and buttercream. It's just out of the refrigerator. It's solid. I'm not going to mess this up. And I always have a front of the cake, right? So I like to turn it around and see what looks most symmetrical going back. What has the smoothest looking uh, uh, icing, right? Because sometimes there's little imperfections in here and I want the best part to be facing forward. So I think right here looks the best. It's the most symmetrical and it's very uh, smooth here. What I wanna do is just take a tool or something and do a little arrow <laughs> so I know where the front of the cake is. Now I wanna remove this from the cardboard underneath. I did just post a video showing how I fill my cakes. And in that video, you see how I tape a cake circle to this bottom cake board and we have to remove it. The bottom of or a cardboard always has these lines going through it. So you have to make sure that you break it according to the lines. So I'm gonna put this down on the counter and it's hanging over the edge a little bit. Put my hand on the top and I wanna break it where the lines go so it'll fold down easy. If I try to do it this way, it's not gonna break. So it has to be where the lines are. Lift underneath, put my hand on the side and I'm using my thumb to push the, the cardboard off, the, the tape that was on there is now off. I wanna put this on top and see how it looks. You have to work quick because the icing can start to soften. I have a level here. And as I put this on top, you can see that the bubble is in the middle. So that tells me that it is even. If I want a little extra protection or a little extra security, I have some icing that was used on the top tier and I, this is just extra icing. I'm just gonna spread it a little bit on the bottom. And this is just gonna help hold the cake in place. So I have my arrow facing forward. I have the front of my cake here and I just want to push it down and then make sure that it is centered completely unless you want it off to the side, right? But this one I'm doing everything centered. And I will scrape the icing off of this with like a spatula or something, remove the tape, and then I will reuse these in cake drums. I washed off the ruler so the flavor from the bottom tier doesn't get in the top tier. Same thing, I'm gonna get low and find the highest point that is kind of towards the center and push this down, push the blue part down, lift it up, and now I know how long my straws have to be. A five inch cake is going on top of this, so I want to have six straws in this tier supporting the upper tier. And same thing, a five inch cake is going on top. I have a four inch cake pan, just put it upside down, make sure that it's center. And you could draw a little line. Now this time I want to do one in the back, one in the front, and then two on either side. So I have to find, I don't want to put it directly in the middle. I want two of them. So I want to try to evenly space them apart. So here I have a five inch cake. This is a double barrel cake. I have a video showing how I showing you how I do this. Basically, it's a two tiered cake iced into one. There is a bottom light uh, bottom tier and then there's a piece of cardboard in the middle and there are straws in the bottom tier supporting the upper tier and then there's a cake on top. I'll link the video to show you how I made it. Again, I want to find the front and this looks pretty good. So I'm going to make this the front. And I'm just gonna do like a little notch in here so that way I can uh, cover this with buttercream. Finding the lines in the cardboard, breaking it away, so put my hand on top, pushing down with my bottom hand, lifting up, turn it on its side, use my bottom hand to push the tape off, good. And now, putting this on. Right now, this looks a little crooked to me, so I wanna even it out. It looks like it's coming down this way. So what I like to do is get some icing, more icing on this side than this side to even it out. So I'm gonna lift it up. You have to work fast. And spreading some icing down. 
but I want it to lift up, have more icing on the right side. So it's going to help lift the cake up. And I like to twist to kind of push it down to the board and the bubble is in the center. It is level. Please excuse this ugly freaking can opener. And I live with my mom and God bless her. I love her so much, but who uses can openers anymore? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So in order to dowel this, I have this, can you see how long this is, <laughs> right? I get these at the home store, like Home Depot or Lowe's. This is a 48 inch dowel that is 5 sixteenths of an inch circumference, right? So it's really long and I have a pencil sharpener that I have only ever used to sharpen these dowels. Never, ever, 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 ever use a pencil sharpener that sharpen lead pencils, okay? So get a completely new one. I just have an automatic one and I can stick it in and it just sharpens, sharpens the dowel. I'm putting the dowel all the way down to the countertop through the board. So I know, I want to know how long I have to cut it. And I have some snips here. I'm just going to unhook it so I can cut. I'm coming down from the top of the cake, just about an inch or so, and then come straight out and I'm going to cut this. I kind of have to turn it around and keep cutting, cutting. It's kind of hard to just cut all at once. And I usually do this over a trash can. There we go. Any excess sticking up, I'm going to use my snips and just cut that off over the trash can. And then I take my snips and just wipe. So that way there's not going to be any um, pieces of wood that are going to be sticking out. All those extra pieces of wood are gone. When you dabble a cake, it is very important to keep the dowel completely straight, not on any kind of angle. So I'm going in the very center of the cake and I'm pushing it down and it's going to stop halfway because there's a piece of cardboard here. So I'm going to push it down until it stops. Now I'm looking all around and making sure that it's not leaning back. It's not leaning to the side. It's perfectly straight. And now I'm just taking a hammer. I'm going to hold it with this hand to keep it straight and just start tapping it until it goes through that first cardboard. And I felt like it went through. So now I'm just going to push it down till it gets to the next cardboard. Same thing, hammer it till it gets through the cardboard. And then I can push it down to the next one. And now I'm going to hammer it all the way down till it stops. It's going to go into the cake board. So I want to hold my hand here and make sure that I don't hammer into the top tier of the cake. It sucks when that happens. All right, once it gets here, I have another smaller little dowel so I can countersink it. So I'm putting it on top and pushing it until I can't hammer anymore. It's going to go through the cake board down to the countertop. When you hear it like that, that's when it's all the way through. So I have a little palette knife here. I can find it and link it below. And I'm going to take some of the same icing that was on the top tier. And I'm going to start to fill that hole with the icing. And once it's filled, I can just scrape the excess off. And there's going to be decorations on the top of this cake, so I really don't have to worry about it. But in case you're not doing decorations, you could just, there's that little line that I made, just covering that up. And then I have little imperfections in the cake, which I can patch. I had to pop a bubble as I was icing it. So I could just take some icing and just patch any imperfections. And here's the cake stacked all level and ready to be decorated. I'm going to stick this back in the refrigerator until I'm ready to decorate it. Now I just want to show you real quick how I dowel a cake where the top tier is covered in fondant. So I want to be able to, you don't want to see the hole in there and you can't just um, seal it with some buttercream. I mean, maybe you could, but anyway, so I'm just going to dowel this whole thing again, like I did earlier in the video. All right, and I'm sorry that this background sucks, but it is what it is. So this dowel, I believe is 5 sixteenths of an inch uh, circumference. And I have this Atico round tip. It's a number 803. 
and you can see that this is the perfect circumference um, that this dowel fits in. So whatever size dowel, you're just gonna wanna find a tip that's the same. I want to cut a little hole out of the top and save this piece of fondant. So I'm gonna go right in the middle and I'm just, I'm twisting it. Why did I say it like that? I'm twisting it and I'm pushing very lightly because I just wanna cut out that very top fondant piece. And it should come out with it. There it goes. So the, that's here. I'm going to just set this aside. And now I'm going to dowel the entire cake. Now I usually do this part with um, icing in a icing bag, but I don't have that right now and I don't feel like filling the icing bag. So if you have an icing bag, with some icing and a tip number four, you could just squeeze icing in the hole until it fills the hole almost to the top. Or another option, I just have a palette knife here and I'm gonna get a little bit of buttercream at a time and I'm gonna put it down. Now this way, you're gonna say this way is so stupid, why don't I just fill um, a bag with icing and squeeze it in? I, I just don't feel like doing it right now. So the reason we do this is because we're going to put that piece of fondant back on and it, there is a big open void in there that you have to fill so the piece of fondant doesn't fall through. I have a paper towel here that I can keep wiping this off. And we can clean off any of the buttercream that's on the fondant at the end. I'm going to take this piece of fondant, that little circle, out of the top. And what I want to do is just flatten it out. So I'm going to squeeze it with my fingers. And now I'm going to put it on top and cover the hole. And I have this little tool here, this ball tool, and I am just pressing it down and spreading it out over the seam. So I still have that paper towel handy. And I'm just taking it and I'm pushing it down a little bit so I'm trying to blend the seam so you really can't notice it I mean if you look real close you'll be able to see a seam let me clean this off I have a dry paintbrush here you'll wipe away some of the buttercream And there you go, it's not, hard. I mean, it's not perfect, but there's gonna be toppers on here and you're not gonna be able to see that. So that is the way that I dowel a cake through a fondant top tier. So there you go, that's how I stack a three tier cake and it's basically the same if you do two or four or five or whatever. You just want to make sure everything is level, that you cut the straws according to the height and then that you put the buttercream down and trying to make everything, it's all about tricking the eye, trying to make everything look even and level, right? So I will put the finished product over here and this is what the cake looked like. I really like how it turned out, it was a really different design. I have videos on how I do the gold glitter on the bottom tier. I will link that below. I have videos on how I do, how I cut names out of fondant. Um, I don't have a video on how I do that line profile. That was my first time doing it and I was not sure how I was gonna do that so I did not film it. And that hair on the top, that is not edible and that sheds everywhere but that's what she wanted. <laughs> But anyway, that is the basics of how to stack a cake. If you guys have, that was my wrist cracking. Did you hear that? <laughs> if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. And you can follow me on social media and I have my website. Everything is listed in the description below as well. And if you wanna stick around, you can watch these two videos next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.